So the last thing I'm going to talk about today is creating digital assets, which means that you can set up any number of node networks and pack it up into a tool that you can make use of in the future. So let's create a simple node network that will turn any mesh into a hexagonal wireframe shape. So I'm going to use a torus as a placeholder, and then I'm going to put down a node called remesh, which triangulates our geometry and retopologizes it. We have control over the level of detail in this target edge length. So next I'm gonna put down a divide sop to turn our Delaunay triangles into Voronoi shapes. So if I check compute dual, it's gonna give us these hexagons. Next I'm gonna create a poly wire to create a wireframe geometry out of it. I'm gonna put this wire radius down And here we have our torus transformed into these hexagon grids. Now we can collapse these tools and make an interface to distill our different parameters into a simple tool set. So what I can do now is highlight them and press this button to create a subnetwork. And now if I right click on this, I can create a digital asset out of it. So let's call it hex wireframe. And now we automatically get a menu for uh, type properties. So here we have uh, one input, but we can have uh, as many as we want. And here we have a parameters menu where we can fetch certain parameters from inside of our network and use them uh, in our interface up here to control the different parameters in one node. So let's dive inside and see what parameters we want control over. So let's say we want the target edge length to control the level of detail in our grid. And maybe we want this checkbox to create our hexagons. And then maybe we want to control the radius of our wire. So I'm going to find these parameters under this tab from nodes. So what we're looking for is our subnet. And the first thing we want to fetch is the target edge length, which we can find under the fixed length folder. And here we have target edge length. Let's drag this into our root. Let's hit apply, go up one level. And here we have our target edge length within the interface of our digital asset. The next parameter we want to control is the compute dual graph checkbox. This can be found in our divide saw. And here we have compute dual, so I'm going to drag that into here as well. Hit apply, and here we have our checkbox. Next, let's go into our poly wire and add our wire radius. Let's hit apply, and maybe I want this wire radius to go in this order. Hit apply again, and we have our sliders and our checkbox. So this is a very crude, simple example of this. But say we have a whole bunch of parameters, and we want to divide them up neatly so that we can organize our parameters and have them be readable for other artists to use. So we can create a number of different elements here to label our parameters and divide them up. Let's add a separator in here between our sliders and our checkbox. If we hit apply, we get a line going across like this. If we create a folder, maybe put our edge length in here and rename this folder to remesh, which is the node where the parameter comes from. If I hit apply, it's going to put a tab in. If I change this to simple, we're just going to get a box around it with the name of our node. Let's put in another folder for our wire radius. So I'm going to put this into root, move this over here, and put our wire radius in here. Rename this folder to polywire. Hit apply. And go to simple. And here we can put all our parameters of the polywire. For example's sake, let's try to fetch another a parameter to put into one of our folders. 
So in our polywire SOP, we can also have control over the subdivisions of our uh, polywire geometry, which makes it smoother. So let's add this parameter to our interface too. I'm gonna go into type properties, which can also be done by going under, the, under this gear icon and clicking on edit parameter interface. So let's go back into the from nodes tab, going into our subnet and this polywire. We're gonna drag divisions into our polywire folder. Hit apply. And here we have control over our divisions. Every time you hit apply in the edit parameter interface menu, this digital asset is saved. All your saved digital assets can be found in the following file path. If you go into documents, your current version of Houdini and into OTLS, here we see our new hex wireframe digital asset. And if we go back here, and if I search for hexwf, it's as if we're using any of the other nodes within our SOP context. And if we dive inside, we have a locked version of our node network. So the reason I kept the torus at the top level here is that now we can plug any object into this node and it'll procedurally generate our hex wireframe for us. So let's try this on the pig head. Let's pipe this in and visualize. And here we have our pig head with the operations applied. So I'm gonna get rid of this and edit my interface in our new HDA. Let's go to type properties and I'm gonna find my, I made a little mistake here because our digital asset did not save the last parameter we added. And that's because I didn't uh, actually execute the change. So I'm gonna get rid of this and edit my interface in our new HDA. Let's go to type properties and I'm gonna find my polywire parameter divisions, put it into my polywire folder. And here I'm gonna click accept. So I have to unlock it and then save in order to save the parameters. So here we have it unlocked, but it's also saved. So now if I put it down one more time, we're gonna see our new parameter inside. So now in our pig head, we can freely move these different parameters around. And of course I get a crash. So here I am in a fresh Houdini session again. Let's try our new HDA on a rubber toy. So I'm gonna type in hex WF. And here we go again. Let's try this one more time. And here the mesh is quite dense, so I'm gonna put my wire radius down a bit more. And maybe put my divisions up a bit. And here I can toggle between my triangles and hexagons. So that's it for today. I'm just gonna make one more tutorial for this series to catch up on some things that I think are important that I missed. Uh, related to some tools I already talked about. So see you next time.